Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on recurrence relations on a Casio FX CG50. We are going to use the FX CG50 to help us answer this question. Let's have a look at parts A and B first. Find the first five terms in the following recurrence relationships. So A we have AN plus 1 equals 2AN plus 4 where A1 equals 2 so the first term of the sequence is 2. And then B we have UN plus 1 equals un over 2 plus 3 over 2 and we have a u1 of 6. On the calculator from the menu if we go to 8 recursion we then have three slots three spaces in which we can input a recurrence relation. So there is an an plus 1 but there isn't actually a un plus 1 despite that being a very common letter that's used in recurrence relations but so what I'm going to do is to use bn plus 1 in place of that and we're actually going to input both of them and find the first five terms of both of them together as we have up to three possible entries that we can do in the recurrence mode on the calculator so let's start off with an plus one if you press right we can input this in so it's two and then an which is f2 two an plus four and then just press execute so we've got the recurrence relation in there and then BN plus 1, remember this is UN, but we'll use BN instead, so it's fraction button, BN over 2, so F3, and then over 2, plus 3 over 2. And then if we did have a third one, we've got another space for it there, CN plus 1, but we don't, so we can just use these two. Before we find the first five terms, we just need to go to set to set up some details for our recurrence relationships. So if you press F5, First thing we want to change is we want to change the start. Now this starts currently at zero, but we want to go from a start of one. So we want to work out the terms one to five, one, two, three, four, five. So if we change the start to one, and then the second thing that we need to alter is how we're referring to the first term here. At the moment, by default, it's got a zero. We want to change that to a one. We're given a one and u one. So A1 is two, the first term of our first sequence. And then the second one there, B1, that will be our U1, which is six. So the second sequence has a first term of six. So now we've got those inputted. If we exit out of this and then press F6 for table, then we should have our first five terms here. So if we have a look at the blue column here, these are our first five terms of sequence A. So it's 2, 8, 20, 44, and then 92. At the bottom there is the fifth term. And then our UN plus 1, which is our BN plus 1, is slightly more complex. We've got decimal figures displayed in the column, but if you actually navigate to them in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the fraction equivalent if we needed to write that one down instead. Um, but we've also got, obviously, the decimals in the, in the table there, and it goes down to... 3.1875 as our fifth term. So there we go, quite straightforward to generate terms in a recursive relationship. Let's have a look at part C. By finding the first four terms, find the recurrence formula that defines the sequence a n equals 3 n minus 1. We've got an nth term of a sequence this time, that's what we're given. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to use the AN slot and, and at the moment it says AN plus 1 but we will change that. Um, although we do have a free slot there CN plus 1, I'm just going to delete these off so we can start again and use the AN slot. So if you just delete the ones that we've got F2 and F1 to delete the ones from part A and B. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the input that we have here. We're going to change it from AN plus 1. If you press F3 for type you can see we can change the nature of the relationships that we have here and we want f1 so we want the top type of relationship here an equals an plus b so if we press f1 uh, then let's change that and we're in a position that we can input then what we're given in the question navigate right and it's 3n minus 1 as our nth term now if we just double check on set we will have everything set up correctly here but if you just press F5 to see what we've got here we're starting at 1 and we're ending at 5 so starting at the first term ending at the fifth term now we could change that to 4 we only need the first four terms 
but as it's just one and five and that's already in we won't change that we'll just have an extra term on there so we'll just leave that come out of that and then we'll press f6 to generate the table and here we have the terms in our sequence so let's just have a look at the first four we've got two five eight and eleven now we need to put these together as a recurrence formula i.e how we can we get from one term to the next term well the first thing to perhaps note down is what our a1 is our first term which is two again so like like part a our a1 equals two here first term in the sequence is two now how would we get from the first term to the second term so how would we get from a1 to a2 well we're going from two to five and then we'd have to go from five to eight so we're adding three each time so it's the term plus three which gets you the next term in the sequence so the way that we would write that out is that a n plus one to define the next term in the sequence it equals a n which is the term we're focusing on plus three so the recurrence relation is a n plus one equals a n plus three with an a1 of 2. For part d now, a sequence has the nth term an equals sine 90 n degrees and n is greater than or equal to 1. And then we've got three different parts there. Find the order of the sequence, view the graph plot of the first 10 terms, and then we've got to find the sum of ar between an r of 1 and 201. So let's exit out of this and once again just because we refer to a n in this question i know that we've got space here b n and c n i'm just going to delete off a n so we can use that and keep it in line with what we're given in the question uh, a n has changed this time so this time we have an a n of sine 90 n so sine 90 f1 to get an n in there now one thing to just note here is that my calculator by default here is in radians the angle unit is in radians and the n that's given in the question is in degrees so we're going to have to change that so if you press execute just to input that as a formula for a n if we want to change the angle unit it's shift and set up and then scroll down till we get to angle and then it's f1 four degrees so that's changed the angle unit to degrees we've got degrees at the uh, top left there Okay, so before we get our results, which we're going to put in the table, let's just check the settings. So it's F5. We've still got it on one to five as previously. Now, just in anticipation of doing part two, and just to give us enough information to be able to find the order of the sequence and definitely confirm it, I'm just going to change the end to 10. So we're going to generate 10 terms with this now. So execute, and then we want to generate a table of results got that incorrectly f6 okay let's have a look at what's happening with the terms in the sequence so we've got for our first term we've got an a n of 1 and then it goes to 0 and then negative 1 and then back to 0 and then the fifth term is 1 again and then 0 and then negative 1 and then 0 and then 1 and then 0 and that's where it ends and presumably the next result is going to be negative 1 and zero and you can see there's this pattern of four so it's alternating between one and zero and negative one and zero and one and so on as we go on the the pattern here is that it's one to zero negative one to zero and then it would be back to one so there's four different parts then in that sequence so the order of that sequence is four part two we've got to view the graph plot of the first 10 terms we've got the first 10 terms in our table so that's already set up so it's f6 for a graph plot just going to scroll right a little bit here so we can see it the dots are very small on here uh, currently but hopefully we can you can see that here we've got results there from 1 to 10 and you can see the pattern of this there so 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 again and so on so you can see the pattern of the results and you can imagine a sine wave coming in between here. So we know that it's related to the sine graph. We've got sine in the recurrence relationship and you can imagine the up and down of a sine wave coming in between these results. But we've got just plots of the terms that we wanted for our sequence there. 
This also kind of helps us to view the order of the uh, sequence as well. One, two, three, four, and then we're back to five is the same as where we were at one. So one, two, three, four again. So it's that same repeating pattern. What we're doing is we're plotting points from a, a sine curve every 90 degrees. So 90 is one, then 180, then 270, then 360. The result for 450 is the same result as it is for 90, which would give us a result for one. So you can see that the period of the sine wave would be 360 degrees. Um, so how many lots of 90 have we got in 360 degrees? It's four. So therefore we've got the order of the sequence being four. So it's a little bit of affirmation for us for part one as well. Part three then, we're going to have a look at doing this in two ways. We're going to logically think our way through this using the results we've got from the table. And then we're actually going to use the sum feature on the calculator to confirm that for us. So let's just go back to the table and just have a look, a look at it again. Let's see what's happening as we go along, adding up the values from the sequence as we go along. So the first time we've got one, and then if we add zero, we still have one. So the sum at two is still one. And then if we add on the third term, that's plus negative one, that gives us zero. And then we add zero, so that would be the sum would be zero after four terms. And then what would happen next is we'd go to five, we'd add on one, and the sum would be one again, plus zero, sum of one, plus negative one, sum of zero, and then plus zero, sum of zero. So the sum would alternate one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero and it would follow that pattern as the n gets larger. So when we're looking at the result for our sum, then the answer's either going to be one or zero, it's going to be one of those. And we just need to have a look at which figure we're going to land on at the end. So it's 201. So will it be a one or a zero uh, when we've added all the terms up to 201? Well, if we think about it, we should know 200 is a divisible by four which means that would come as the fourth in the sequence, which we know that the sum is zero. Remember, it's one, one, zero, zero as our sums. So the fourth in the sequence should be zero. So 200 would give you a sum of zero. So 201 should give you a sum of one. But we can check that out if we're not too sure. What you can use is the calculator to help us find the sum of that. If we press menu and come out of recursion and we go to run matrix, and then we want F4 for math, F6 to navigate right, and then we want F2 for sum. And then in the blue brackets there, we want to input uh, nth term formula, so that's sine 90. And then, well, what should we use? Well, we're referring to R in the sum formula here, so I'm going to use the letter R. It will be a capital, alpha and six to get R, um, but it will still work. Um, so I'm going to use R in place of that. And here again, we want R alpha R, and then right, and then we want that one, so it's sum from one, and then navigate right, on the top we want 201. So the sum of the terms from one to 201 for sine 90 R, if we press execute, then there we have one. Sum of one, we just want to maybe go back and confirm what we were discussing about uh, the sum for 200 change that to 200 and press execute yes that's zero so that just confirms what we were discussing before we can sort of look at the sequence and work through it logically or if we're not too sure if we want some confirmation then we can use the sum feature on the fxcg50 to help us find that there we go how we can look at recurrence relations on a casio fxcg50 don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos but that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time on the calculator guide